looking for his second Winston Cup victory. Matt Kenseth has a 3.8 second lead. Bobby Labonte now holding his own against Sterling Marlin, Rusty Wallace, and Ricky Craven, the top five. Tony Stewart sixth. Jeff Green has moved up to seventh. Neil Bonnet started 30th to win this. Kenseth today started 25th. Steve? Hey, Mike, we may have problems with my 32 car of Ricky Craven. He just said the car is shaking going into the corners. If it gets worse, I'm coming in. I'm pretty sure it's the right front, and the crew is already on the wall. But what that tells me is you use a lot of brake here, and he's, he's been using the brakes. He's probably about got them worn out. The rotors are warped up a little bit, and that thing's starting to vibrate when he puts his foot on the brake. That would be my guess, because I've had it happen here a number of times. Craven is fifth. Kurt Busch was the only car at the end of the last caution flag to come in and top off the tank just before the green. He might have an extra two laps or so of fuel under that 97. And not only that, he's fast. I mean, it's not like he's going to use it. If he was to win this race, it would be not a big surprise, because that car is fast. Jack Roush has several cars in this race, and he never plays a hand the same way as the rest of them. What's up, Matt? And Roush, known as a gas miser, always good on fuel mileage. Jimmy Fanning is the crew chief for Kurt Busch. Can you go the distance? No, we're going to be about 10 laps short. Uh, we can't make it, so add some now. When do you think you may try to make your final gas and go? Probably about uh, 380, somewhere in there. 75, 380. Well, remember, Kurt Busch had a great race car here back in the fall, led 45 laps before engine failure ended his day. Here's a surprise. Johnny Benson, who started third, is on pit road have to be an unscheduled stop. I think so. Uh, they just haven't had the kind of day I'm sure they were anticipating. Qualifying well like they did him. Trader up on the Trader second, him third. I th I'm sure they thought they were going to be right up there all day, and they've really struggled. Well, we know with this pit stop, he can go the distance. It's only been 43 laps since they were on pit road. But he'll go two laps down with the green flag stop. Ricky Craven after Rusty Wallace for fourth. Darrell, you talked about using a lot of brake. You know, this is one of those places you, you enter the corner so hard, and as you say, you use the brake. You're using the brake 800 times here over the course of a 400-lap race. And, you know, we have brake openings that we try to cool those brakes, but as crew chiefs, we get so aggressive trying to run those openings smaller and smaller because we know tape on the front end. The more tape you run, the more it helps that front downforce. We've heard everybody saying they're tight. More front downforce helps that car to turn. Yep. Second place engine builder Mark Cronquist just down to confer with lead crew chief Robbie Reiser. He's just trying to find out if they think they can make it or not. You think they tell him? Oh yeah, they always share information <laughs> with one. Yeah. <laughs> one guy's in a Ford, one guy's in a Pontiac. He's, yeah, sure, he'll tell him everything he wants to know. All right, Johnny Benson made an unscheduled stop. Dick? Well, there were two reasons for the stop, Mike. One was that the car was wicked loose, and they decided they really needed to tighten it up, and simultaneously, they thought it was a good idea to short pit, come in before everybody else, get four fresh tires on that car, and make a run for the checker. To Jeannie. In the 30 pit, Jeff Green radio again, saying uh, these brakes are getting pretty soft. Daryl, as you said just moments ago, so much use, so he's trying to lay off them as much as he can, but he also has another problem. He is loose off and tight in the center. See, what happens is we, we harp, and the, and the crew chief harps all day long, stay off the brake, stay off the brake. But as the tires wear down and the car wants to run up the hill the way it does, the only way you can slow it down is early on you do it with a throttle to get it to turn, but later on you do it with a brake to get it to turn, and you may even trail brake a little. Matt Kenseth's lead is shrinking 2.3 seconds over Bobby Labonte, and Sterling Marlin is right there on second place. Labonte might be a change there when we come back. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. The caution flag flies for the eighth time this afternoon in the Subway 400. Debris on the front straightaway. Puts paid to Johnny Benson's chances with that uh, early off-timing uh, off pit stop and Elliott Sadler's. They'll both go a couple of laps down, and as pit road opens, here they come. That's the chance you take, and uh, buddy, right now you got to be, you got to have a great pit stop. This is where you need that good stop. Ricky Strategy's Craven, out the window. Ricky Craven's guy's got to step it up a notch because he's been a little slow out. 
Dick Bergeron. Seventeen has been killing him. And Matt Dick Kenseth Bergeron. and his final pit stop of the day. If all goes according to plan, they needed this pit stop. They could not have made it all the way on fuel. They're only putting a quarter round fight in this race car. That's it. It has been terrific all day. To Matt. Bobby Labonte already in. Todd Foster pulling off the left front. They made an air pressure adjustment in the left rear. Labonte needs help to forward fight. And he's headed to the center of the corner to Steve. Matt, Ricky Craven in just in front of Sterling Marlin. Crew chief Mike Beam said, get all the gas in it. You can in the 32. I don't want to affect the balance of this race car. He's referring to weight. One hundred forty-six laps to go. Kenseth, Marlin, Labonte, the way they came on to Pit Road. We'll shuffle them off Pit Road for you when we come back for the Subway 400 on Fox. Welcome back. Just 44 laps to go. Matt Kenseth, who has led the most laps, is leading Sterling Marlin. Rusty Wallace running third, and Jeff Hammond, the race out of Pit Road. What did you see that caught your eye? I'm telling you right now, the fact that Matt Kenseth's crew once again beat Sterling Marlin off Pit Road to give Matt that preferred line getting down in this, on this restart could be crucial to who wins this race. Kenseth, the Winston Cup Rookie of the Year in 2000. His first career Winston Cup victory came uh, nearby uh, Charlotte in the Coca-Cola 600. Tonight on Fox Sports Net, get all the wrap-up you need from the weekend in Rockingham on NASCAR Victory Lane All Access and full hour of interviews, highlights, analysis, wrapping up all the action from here, plus an exclusive All Access pass from one of NASCAR's best. As Kenny Wallace takes you behind the scenes into what it takes to get ready for race day. It's NASCAR Victory Lane All Access tonight only on Fox Sports Net. Let's go back upstairs. They're ready to go green, right? Further update on David Bryant, the front tire carrier for Jimmy Johnson. He has broken his right leg and has been taken to Carolina Medical Center in Charlotte for treatment. All right, it's getting, the restart. it's getting late in the day. That sun setting down there. It's going to be hard to see. you got lap cars all around you. you got to try to win this race. And gas mileage and tires is out the window. Don't concern anything. Bring me back nothing but the sterling wheel. 42 laps to go. Has Matt Kenseth's crew been on the mark on pit road? Matt Kenseth's been all over the top of that steering wheel on restarts. It's like he shot out of a cannon. And he has got the wolves after him, too, boys. Look at that. In one lap, he just drove off and left those cats. The front five have cleared the cars one or more laps down. And even though these guys up front are racing for the win, there's guys back in here that are one lap down that are trying to, you know, finish, be the first car one lap down. Uh, that's 20th place, Kevin Harvick is one lap down. And with everybody on new tires, they're all Superman now. Yes, sir. For a while. Well, they've all cranked it up. It's time for you folks to crank it up. jumped out to a one second lead much as he did on that last restart right now he's at least a tenth quicker than anybody behind him faster than sterling marlin faster than rusty wallace yeah i don't know what adjustments they made on that car today but whatever they are they have hit it right on the money i mean that thing has been awesome the second half of the race That time he was two and a half tenths quicker on that lap than sterling marlin keep doing what you're doing looking nice and smooth giving him lap times and the interval back to the second place car. And he's running down on the bottom of the racetrack. I mean, he's really been down there most all day. It's got, he's got that Mark Martin look, you know? Keep that left wheel down on that white line and go. Mike Wallace back in the race after repair of crash damage. Out of the shade, Sterling Marlin. Back into the sun on the back straightaway with the sun at his back. 
Boy, it's really hard to see going down into turn one. The luxury these guys have today, though, is they got those tear-offs. So if you've saved one for the end of the day, you're not going to have that beat-up windshield like we're used to. Look at the glare on that dash. Of course, these are Lexan or plastic windshields. Used to run glass windshields here. We didn't know what tear-offs were. No. It was really bad. But look how dark it gets right through there. We'll talk about, about a, a driver that we've not talked about today. Started 16th, and, and I just want to say, I don't think anybody anticipated Robbie Gordon having the performance that he's having already and winning a race at the end of last year. But I think the whole key is the owner he's working with now, Got Richard right. Childress. Yeah, he right. knows what Robbie Gordon's looking for. He knows how to handle Robbie Gordon, and he's getting the full potential out of this young man in this race car. Yeah, and then, the, you know, every now and then a light will come on in some of these guys' heads and realize this is my best opportunity to prove myself. He's matured a lot since a year ago. He's averaged 18th with one win last year at New Hampshire in a turkey day race. And I think that's, I think that's uh, Ricky Cravens is the same way. I think, he's, I think he's realized this is a great opportunity for me to prove myself. He, he just proved it to Bobby Labonte, didn't he? He, he took, he took a, uh, that opportunity. Third, fourth, and fifth here. Well, if he's going to catch Matt Kenseth, he's going to have to pass all those guys pretty shortly. Last year, Craven started 41st in this race on a provisional. Ran it to the top five. And he was fun to watch, too. Yes. Remember, he passed everybody and just passed all the cars. There he is, top of the racetrack right there. It's a little early right now. Rusty has those fresh tires. He's down on the bottom, gets a good bite off the corner right there off turn two. This is the end of the track where he accelerates. He really comes through this end of the track. Ooh, car got a little bit loose with him that time. Back in, stepped out on it. He's pushing it hard right now. He knows he's got to. There you go. Got it down on the bottom. See how much better the bottom of the track is down to one and two now? Well, especially and also with the fresher tires. We may see him back up there later on in this run. Got sun in three and four, so you got... I don't have a lot of grip on this end of the track, but you're picking up grip on the on the one and two end. Craven ran a lower line through three and four that time, and it paid off. He got right to Wallace's bumper. Here he goes. He's under him. Accelerate right past him. Hey, once you get the thing where it was sticking to the bottom and you can get back in the throttle, you're going to beat that guy up on the outside. Well, two laps ago, he was all at the top of one and two. Rusty was at the bottom. Now they flip-flop. Mike Skinner, puff of smoke as he got up in the marbles, flames from out the exhaust pipe. And that may be the day for the Morgan McClure Chevy. You gotta have a caution. That caution looks like a lot of speed. A lot of fluid looked like was coming out of that car back there. Not gonna be clear of cars. Yellow is out. Now Skinner was way up out of the groove when that let go, but he's up where some of those drivers like to run. So caution is out for the ninth time today. No one is in touch with the leader back, Kenseth, to try and get a lap back. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Four tires. Yeah. Four tires. Thank you. <laughs> Spare two if you got one. Figured you'd like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave me out here. 28 laps to go. Got to think, come. You don't think anybody will try for track? Position? Oh, I think it's a, it's a two-edged sword. If the leaders go and I was middle of the pack, back I might stay out. If the leaders stay out, I'm back the pack. I might come in. So it's just kind of see what the leaders do. Well, what's the leader going to do? There's Matt Kenza's team up on the wall, ready to come over. They got their game face on. I don't think they're faking. Here, 4,700, nice and smooth, guys. Put four tires on it. Nice and smooth. 19 cars on the lead lap, and 28 laps all will come. 28 laps is just outside the window of reality. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if it was a 20 laps, I might hang out there and Craven stays out. Mm. Everybody Whoa. else comes in. That's a lonely feeling. Yeah, boys, I, I don't feel good about that. Dick? Well, he's going to come in. He's just going to take four tires. No adjustments in this car. It's not so long ago that they were in here. This crew now has simply got to perform flawlessly. If they do that, they've got a great shot to win this race. Best shot their driver has ever had. So far, so good. This has been a real team effort with a good crew, good driver, good car, good crew chief. Bobby Labonte's service is already done. He beats the 24 off pit road. One adjustment, air pressure in the right rear. Kenseth leads them down the end of pit road, but Rusty Wallace got out of the pit second. Then Marlon and Labonte and Ricky Craven, if he was the only driver in the lead lap not to pit, he's going to be the fella in the Bermuda shorts when everybody else is in the tuxedos.
We'll see when we come back. This is NASCAR on Fox.